Svein, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Great. Now, uh, I'll just uh, ask you just to read through those questions. Yeah. And, uh, think a little about your answers. Uh, while I'm now going to publish results from the uh, the uh, poll. Okay. Five seconds okay. now. Great. Okay, now I've published the poll results. Can I? Uh, I think you should all be able to see on the right hand side of your screen. You might have to uh, drag up the poll window to make it a little bit bigger. But as you can see, uh, if when it comes to problems you observe, a uh, large number of people mentioned noise. Um, the, pro the is issue is the fact that kitchen hoods need to have a very high flow rate to get sufficient uh, capture efficiency. Also, the, um, the second biggest issue is actually these designer hoods that uh, do are not don't have a geometric form uh, for, for good aerodynamic capture of odors and grease. And we have also um, the fact that uh, a lot of kitchens are fitted without consideration at all for uh, capture efficiency. And there's a big problem with people don't change their carbon filters, uh, aren't aware of, um, there's a, basic, a lot of problem with low awareness by architects. Uh, people don't shift their fat filters. Yeah, a lot of issues. We, uh, you, the audience, feel that we need more strict building regulations, um, strict to minimum energy performance requirements, let's say energy labeling. Those are the two most important measures. And uh, um, a lot of people aren't sure if the building regulations actually have a requirement at all about, uh, let's say, performance of, uh, let's say, flow rates. So there's a lot of there is an issue with uh, lack of awareness here. Anyway, I want to invite Svein. We'll publish this poll in the webinar report. Svein. Yep. Uh, now we want to uh, we we have about ten minutes and want to go yep. through yep. a lot of questions here. Yeah, rather so, fast. Yeah. Uh, would you like to pick through uh, those questions here? Yeah. And answer any of them. Yeah, I can. I mean, in my presentation, I was mainly talking about uh, odor reduction, or uh, so and so. But in the standards, of course, there are different things also measured that I didn't mention, like lighting, uh, grease, and things like that. So, mm. but maybe yeah. question one, most of the important, the most important thing, I would say, that's the odor uh, ab uh, reduction factor. Yeah. And yeah, I would say that's, absorption that's factor. Uh, the main purpose of the product. Yeah. But uh, in the eco design, you don't see it at all because uh, no. there are different uh, standards and the standard, uh, the, uh, the 61591 standard is, to, to my opinion, the, the reason it's not mentioned is because it for extract air it gives unreasonably high okay. results. Mm, mm. Uh, you come from Sweden. What, what, mm. what do the building regulations say there? Uh, actually, it doesn't give you any figure at all anymore. We used to have 75% according to the old Swedish standard. Uh, it's removed. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, mm. mainly saying that you should have good extract function. Okay, and it has a flow rate requirement? There, that has also been removed. Uh, it's, um, you have just the general uh, requirement for ventilation of the whole building or the whole premises. Okay. But uh, we used to have about 15 liters, 10 liters per second as a minimum. And a lot of designers still use these old tables, but we don't have them in the regulations anymore. So it's up to the manufacturers or the designers of ventilation systems to, to make it the 
we have these functional requirements in the building regulations today that okay yeah mm. so so uh you would say that the the old requirement set for of 75 percent is some people are still using it basically yeah yeah okay. and the, mm. the problem was when we switched to 61591 then uh, it was very easy to reach 75 but yeah actually the 75 wasn't what would you say would be the requirement if you have a kitchen unit tested by 61591? It, it's, yeah, it's 75% it, there is no, is there the is no way to, uh, if you have uh, tested with one standard, you cannot just calculate what you will get uh, with the other standard. But I would say you should actually above 90%. Yeah, okay. And we understand Horvai showed a very interesting graph showing that. Yeah. The capture yeah. efficiency actually increases for both standards with yeah. uh, flow rate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost, uh, you could you could achieve ninety percent with both standards if it's a high enough flow rate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course you can. If you have high enough, you can get hundred, nearly hundred. But uh, that, then you have all this problem with uh, under pressure in the airtight buildings and things like that. So yeah. Uh, would you feel that it is correct to have a fundamental requirement that is not a flow rate but a, a like an odor reduction? Or do you feel but, you but, must that, have that, but that needs to, like I had in my conclusion, that that we test the the, the products according to the same standard, but we don't do that today. If if you don't have a fan built in in apartments in Sweden. We use one standard, and if we have a built-in fan, we use another, and you cannot compare the results. That's not. Um, I, I would. I, I think rather the American way of have a, at least a minimum airflow rate, like 40 or 50. Okay. I don't believe in 20 liters. It doesn't give you good We're, performance regardless how you design it. Um, we, we would like to ask uh, Martin. Uh, are you there, Martin? Yes, Andrew. Yeah. So, uh, can you start reading the questions? I just want uh, to close uh, as one last issue uh, with Fine. Yeah. Okay. So um, there was a question about MEC, the the um, the the, um, the actual tests. Uh, the, what is the advantage of using MEC compared to other gases? Well, compared to nitrogen, yeah, so it's that you couldn't uh, the MEC you can use for uh, carbon filters as well, recirculating fans. You couldn't use that for the other ones. Oh, for the yeah. nitrogen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Svein. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin. Yeah. Um you notice the uh, first question, actually two questions related to this. How is it possible to regenerate or renew these uh, activated coal filters? It uh, depends on the filter. As I said, uh, the uh, normal charcoal filters cannot be regenerated. Just these honeycomb filters, which mm. are made from a mixture of uh, ceramic and uh, activated coal, they can be regenerated. The other standard filters cannot be regenerated. Okay. And, and, and the and regeneration is done uh, about at about 200 degrees in the oven. Okay. Yes. Right. Um... So is there any disadvantage with this honeycomb uh, coal then, as it has poor um, capture efficiency? Or it is not as, uh, let's say, at least in the complete design, as as I, as I have shown in my list, it's not as efficiency as the standard charcoal filters, mm -hmm. but it's still quite good. And the big advantage is that you do not have to replace it. There was a question about the reference to the to this full study. Um, it has been anonym, anonymized, or I don't, I don't know to say okay. it, in order to avoid competition between uh, the, the, um, the competitors that have been part of the study. Okay, so, but, so the, but your slides there. will be available in the webinar report. Yes, of so course. That, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the uh, fact that you have a carbon filter, does that increase fan power? Because it's an additional pressure drop. Like question four. Question four. Uh, um, depends on on how you compare. Uh, 
if you compare this with a very good duct system, of course, um, the recycle, uh, this uh, charcoal filters increase a little bit the pressure drop and so lower a bit of it, a little bit the extraction rate. But if you have a, a bad uh, ducting system, it's nearly the same. Or not a yeah, perfect that's ducting logical. system, it's nearly the same. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that makes that's common sense. Yeah. Um, so, uh, fire hazards, coal filters capture maybe also grease residue. Is that yeah. a fire hazard? Um, I would not say like this because the, by far the biggest quantity is in the grease filters. And there yeah. you have the problem. If you do not, uh, the real problem is if you do not um, uh, wash the grease filters and if you have by, uh, by bad luck a fire in your frying pan, then you will light the appliance and really, then the charcoal filter doesn't matter anymore. Um, charcoal filters can't remove moisture. So is uh, that right? They, they can't remove it, but they can absorb. They absorb they, it and they re-emit it at a later time. Exactly. So they, well, buffer, so they buffer the peaks. They can buffer the, uh, the humidity uh -huh. peaks. Really? OK. Yes. That's interesting. Um, so. Do they age over time when these filters are not in use? Because they are, are pro probably are exposed to the air all the time, even if fans switched off. So they can potentially absorb. Um, so uh, if there, of course, if you have a, let's say, um, for if you do not use them for years, of course, they will use also, even if you don't use them. But normally, you need recirculation through, you need an airflow through the filters in order to have an aging of the filters. Okay, so they don't really have a shelf life, as in not, not in use. They have to be actively used with airflow. Yes. Okay. Uh, so is it? So, so a pass, the passive aging is very, very low. Okay. And, and uh, what decides the age? Uh, how long a car for a filter lasts? I mean, is, is it? Here it's, uh, is it like the, how much, the volume of air uh, per kilogram of coal or carbon? Or what, what, I what decides I how long a filter will last? A uh, family <laughs> who use, uh, switch the fan on, okay, and uh, much more often and ventilate, let's say, during their one year, twice as much air through their fan as an, another family. That coal fil that filter will last half as long. Is that right? Uh, not exactly, because it depends how much the air is charged, because it's with, with, with the cooking with with the cooking moisture yeah. or cooking or doors, okay. because uh, if you pa if clean air is passing the filter, nothing nothing will happen with the filter. It will not age. So you really have to load them. You have to charge them, and then of course you have an aging, and of course finally is losing. Uh, slowly and slowly more and more performance. Okay. Uh, we be aware of the time uh, moving, uh, Peter? Yeah, we, we have to move to the... Um, Ian, fortunately we have very few questions left. Are you there, Ian? I'll, I'll answer these, these two questions here. Right. So the accuracy question is a good one. For the, for the airflow measurements I described, for the, for the field testing of airflow, Probably those airflows are within about uh, 5%. Uh, most of the uncertainty is not from the actual flow meter itself, but it's because we put this cardboard capture device that is fundamentally changing the airflow pattern going into the unit. And so, uh, something, so, you, so if you measure, let's say, uh, 100 liters per second, it's probably plus or minus 5 liters per second. The oh, capture that's, efficiency, that's good. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, the open shape hood, can you explain what that is? Oh, sure. So um, I think we've touched on some of this in, in some of your poll questions too. Hoods have got different geometries. Some have simply got a flat bottom to them. Some of them actually physically cover more area. The further out they say for a wall mount hood, the further out it comes from the wall, it covers the burners better. And of course that improves capture efficiency. But the open shape means that if you look up at the bottom, um, as if you were a cooking pot and you looked up, 
do you see a flat bottom or do you see like a, an open bowl shape? Oh, it and has a bottom. skirt, basically. Yeah. A rim going round. Absolutely. Ah, okay. Right. Um, thank you, Ian. Uh, I would like to invite Hova. Are you there? Yes. Great. Uh, uh, Kari, yeah. can you scroll a little bit further down? We just want to see bef uh, which questions yeah. Hova has. Um, you have... Um, what's your opinion about uh, downdraft hoods? Um, when it comes down to downdraft hoods, um, they can work uh, qu quite good, but of course we are working against the physical laws here. We are trying to uh, extract uh, heated air down into the downdraft solution. So in terms of installation, it's very important that the installation is done, uh, been done at a really, really good uh, installer. Uh, secondly, I would also like that uh, on downdrafts, if we have a high pots and pans, it will drastically uh, decrease the level of, um, let's call it the ex efficiency rate of the product, meaning that we would need to add maybe a lid or something on top of the uh, worktop to, to mm -hmm. uh, achieve good energy or efficiency. Um, uh, and also when it comes down to the difference between recirculation or duct out, of course, we see a, a quite big difference that the duct out systems normally function a little bit better uh, than the recirculations because of the um, it is actually better to get the um, polluted air out of the building yeah uh, your answer basically is related to question five uh, these very uh, ugly big volume uh, hoods uh, yeah. do, you, do you think will that, that that become more popular in the future uh, when if people become more aware of the fact that the uh, like unmodern ugly hoods actually uh, are best for your health no, I, I really hope not, <laughs> to be honest. Okay. Uh, but uh, we have also put them there uh, in the test because of uh, it's 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 good to know what is the minimum level that we can achieve if we uh, I mean uh, adjust the um, the airflow a little bit up. So I would say if we go to around 165 cubics, we can make normal cucurbits with a nice design, you know, uh, built-in in cabinets, uh, pull-outs, slim lines, which is normal for the end consumer. So with 165 cubics, we can achieve 75% of uh, efficiency rate, uh, even with air, air disturbance, which is a, it's a quite good level of uh, okay. aiming for. And it's what we use in all our descriptions in Norway. And we, we have a very, very good feedback from the end customers after one year. Okay, thank you. Um, question four. I think we'll, we'll leave this as the last question. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with the mechanical ventilation in the building when uh, the cooker's on, as in, you know, to, to provide re a necessary replacement air? This is quite easy solvable, uh, at least in the Nordics, where we have balanced ventilation. Uh, on the cooker, it's, it should be a potential free signal or uh, a um, measurement sensor in the ducting system, which measures the outlet air. And this uh, sensor sends signal to the balanced ventilation unit that, that the supply air into the house should be more or less equal to uh, the extraction air. Uh, on our uh, you're saying that the supply air increases, but the extract air does not increase? On the balanced ventilation unit, correct, yeah. So the balanced okay, yeah. ventilation unit uh, hmm. extracts air goes down and the supply air goes up because we okay. also extract air from the kitchen. But, uh, is this a feature the, uh, in, uh, in many uh, supplies of the air handling unit suppliers for sorry. the actual ventilation? Sorry, what did you say? Is this a common feature? Yes, yes, it's a common feature. All the yeah. main, uh, air ventilation companies have this as uh, this product, and also right. uh, mm. the situation will be quite different when it's in recirculation mode because then it may be better that the uh, balanced ventilation unit increases both the air inlet and the air outlet. Mm. Well, thank you so much, everyone.